that Portland electric power washer from Harbor Freight. Does it really clean or will it take you to the cleaners? That's what we'll find out today. Seems every ad and certainly every magazine advertisement for Harbor Freight stars this little fluorescent gem as the budget might and must have to keep your belongings sparkling clean. But does it really live up to the hype? I don't think anyone really pays retail for this because it's always on sale. The price doesn't seem so bad, and I do like the colors, so naturally this seems like a wise decision. And I have quite a few items that I could really use a power washer on. And here we go, my first ever electric power washer. It's touting a whopping 1,750 PSI with 1.3 gallons per minute. It has a few different spray adjustments and onboard storage. And just look at all the handy little things you can do. Oh yes, we will test some of these and more. Right away we can see the sacred owner's manual. And there's some kind of wire tool inside. Here are some various accessories like the handle. Uh, the spray gun, which seems kind of light, trigger action is a bit crunchy. The detergent bottle, and uh, I have to say, I am excited about this. And this the thing, which I'm sure is cool, the high pressure hose. This actually feels pretty sturdy, cardboard accessory. And of course, the main attraction. Let's take it out of the bag and let it breathe a little. Well, the manual likes to ensure that we lay out all these items to make sure that we have everything. Uh, Mm, yep, that's close enough. All right, so let's begin the assembly process. Uh, where are the screws? everything away. Spray gun, wand, hose, and detergent bottle. Let's take a look at the spray gun in more detail, including with this power washer is an attachment I'm excited about called the foam canister uh, detergent bottle. This is supposed to help jet soap out on your car, or trailer, or whatever else needs to be foamed. And then we have the traditional wand with an adjustable spray pattern. Now let's see how this fits. There's some notches where we have to line these up and press kind of hard and twist clockwise to secure. And of course, here is the spray adjustment. Exploring the mechanism to change between the two different modes, I'm not quite impressed. There's so little resistance on the rotation and it kind of lacks any firm notches or stop points to give it the confidence that it'll stay where you set it. Hmm. The on-off switch is operated with this large plastic dial. It feels lightweight and sort of like the wand, it doesn't really have a firm feel to it. The cord stows away with the help of this Velcro plus this uh, plastic bracket. You know how in vacuum cleaners this bracket usually rotates so you can pull the cord off? Uh, yeah, I guess this is in the vacuum cleaner. Let's take a closer look at this power cord. The manual specifies that this unit has a GFCI protection built into the plug of the power supply cord and it should be tested before each use. The white button is to test the protection and the red button is for the reset. Should the power interrupt or trip, press this to get it going again once you've determined that it's safe to do so. We'll make sure the reset is pressed for now. Alright, so let's plug this in and get it going. Uh, hmm, uh, here we have our first problem. With the electrical outlets I have installed in my house, this is going to be a challenge. My first inclination is to grab an extension cord. However, the manual clearly states not to use one. I'll, I'll leave it to the viewer to determine how I fix this issue. The manual states that we should run water through the supply hose to purge any contaminants. And of course, we'll turn the water off and then attach it to the water inlet on the pressure washer. I'll go ahead and prime the water through the system before I turn it on. I'll do this by leaving the unit off and just pulling the trigger on the spray gun. This should help prevent the pump from running dry during the first startup. You can see that air is being purged out of the system. Let's turn this on for the first time and see what it does. The pump powers on for just a moment and shuts off automatically when pressure is obtained. This will cycle automatically as we use the spray gun. Let's start by hosing down this wheel. Okay, well, the narrow pattern works well. Let's try the wide spray for a moment. Whoa, uh... Let's try to reprime the unit by turning off the machine and pressing the trigger to let the water recycle through the unit.
And as suspected, there is a bit of air still bleeding from the system. Uh, much better. It's, it's loud, but not as obnoxious as many of its gasoline counterparts. I suspect that more expensive brands would be a bit quieter, but at least this one won't drive the neighbors crazy, at least not right away. Let's try this out on the wheels of our Tahoe. I recently changed the brakes and it's been shedding quite a bit of rotor and brake pad dust on the wheels. Now, before the criticism starts, these are older aluminum wheels and already have major damage with the clear coat, so I don't take as much precaution as I used to when they were newer. My goal here is to speed up the cleaning process. Well, it's sort of loosening the dirt off. I don't think I want to use too much more pressure on these as it may damage the clear coat even further than it already is. This will give us a good soaking to help loosen the dirt. I'll just give these a brief scrub to help agitate the dirt. As you can see, it's coming off a bit easier than just using a low pressure soaking. And let's give it a rinse. Not bad. Let's try this on the Audi wheels as well. It's been a while since they've been deep cleaned and this material has a uh, different finish. Alright, much better. This is so much satisfying actually. Let's give it a bit of a scrub and of course a final rinse. Alright, I cannot wait any longer. Let's try the detergent bottle foam soaker thing. The manual does state to use the recommended type of detergent, but it doesn't state what that really is. I'm sure a quick trip down to the auto store would do the trick, however I just dug around the garage for a few minutes and found this old bottle of Mr. Clean car wash. Whoops, the washer came out. Let's tuck that back up in there and close the bottle. Let's remove the wand and install the detergent bottle. And now the moment of truth. Holy smokes, it works! I'm actually quite enjoying this. Another handy way to utilize this accessory is to really get into areas like the undercarriage. This makes quick work of a task that took quite a bit of effort before. This will also be handy on the front of our camper with all those bugs. And just like that it reaches up to the top and gives the front a good soaking. Coming back to our detergent bottle, I can attest that although we get a nice soap distro, talk about eating the soap. I went through most of my supply with several refills to get through these projects. I also noticed that if I were to set the gun and canister on its side, the soap would leak out. And it actually leaks pretty fast. Obviously there is a problem with the washer or the tolerance of these mating surfaces. I tried removing and reinstalling the washer a couple of times without success. I'll probably work on this at a later date, possibly replacing the washer or finding a better way to seal these two pieces. We have a lot of deck on our house that needs to be repainted. Our smaller front deck is in the worst shape and has been needed to be refinished for a couple of years. Let's begin to prep the service by knocking off all this loose stuff. Well, it doesn't appear that the fan spray really is working all that well. Let's move this up to the narrow spray. Here we're digging in a bit deep. This is what happens when using the narrow spray too close to the working surface. But this is easily avoidable by backing up just a little bit. Ah, um, much better. Although this is going to take a while. It's worth noting the manual advises against using the harsher spray setting, and uh, as you can see why. It also specifies the wood shouldn't be cleaned in direct sunlight. <clears throat> Alright, let's take care of our rails. This isn't too bad, although some of the paint is a bit stubborn. There are purpose detergents for this type of deck stripping and probably some better methods. However, I'll just use some sandpaper and quickly go over these areas before painting. Another recommended use according to the box and manual is for washing windows. And actually, I think I'm going to pass on this test. My windows are pretty aged and compliments of the builders, some of the cheapest ones you can buy. And actually, we have a problem with these things leaking. Let's pass on this test for now, but I'm sure this would work fine. While doing some final pressure washer prep on the deck the other night, I noticed the machine was cycling on and off even though the sprayer handle was fully depressed. So according to what I'm reading here, this could be the result of a tip needing to be demineralized and cleaned. For this, it recommends using a demineralizing solution. We have some vinegar under our sink, so we'll soak the end of the wand in here for a few hours. Now we'll take our wire tool and clean out the spray tip. However, after the original unpacking, I promptly lost it. 
so let's look through the bins of fury and hmm this is probably not the recommended way of doing this so just don't lose your tool like I did after I complete this procedure the pressure washer is working fine again one of the tips I'd like to offer is dealing with a high pressure hose after it's been decoupled and recoupled a few times it becomes stubborn and almost impossible to attach I recommend using a lubricant and applying it to the washer. After that, it seems to go together a bit easier. I also notice that sometimes the hose can get tangled up. This is because the hose is a bit stiff, so spending a few minutes and twisting it fully when needed seems to help. And now we're at the end of our season and it's time to store this thing away. And believe me, it gets cold here in Montana. The manual recommends installing antifreeze into the pump. And I'm not exactly sure how I'd get this stuff flowing through here, honestly, as this part is conveniently left out of the manual. So what I have here is an adapter I use for my RV. One end fits into an air pressure hose fitting and the other attaches to a standard water hose fitting. My plan is to run some air through the system, sort of like how you winterize your sprinkler system in the fall. I have the pressure set down just under 40 psi on my compressor. We'll let this run for a few minutes. The air feels pretty dry now, so I think this will be good enough for storage. So, what is my take? Is this a green fountain of fury with the ability to strip a grizzly bear bare? Or is this more of a gentle spring shower of drizzling disappointment? Well, I'd say it's right in between those two extremes. For 75 bucks, this really isn't a bad deal. It does everything that's advertised. There are quite a few things that are not refined, such as the plug-in, the inefficient way to loop off the cord, the spray adjuster lacking a solid feel between the two modes, the general feel of the trigger on, and the leaky detergent bottle. However, my friends, uh, what do you expect from something this cheap? I, it was able to finish all my projects for the season and is still running fine from spring to fall. And at this price point, that's about all you can ask for. If you're on the edge, don't hesitate to buy it and just deal with the shortcomings. But if you're into quality, spend a few extra bucks for a more reputable brand. There is one question that yearns to be answered and I know it's on all of your minds. Can we use this pressure washer to clean our fruits and vegetables? Let's find out. As with anything, it'll work if you try hard enough. If you enjoyed this review, please consider subscribing and joining our community. Adventure awaits just around the corner and we'd love to have you along for the ride.